Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. At this time, I'm going to call the Pauline County Board of Commissioners January 8, 2019, meeting to order. And my knowledge, we don't have any elected officials this afternoon. You might correct me. Glad to have all your own with your election or not. Um, I'd ask all of you to turn off any mobile devices and Brian, can you bring the list, please? Uh, this afternoon, uh, before the East Pauline High School JRTC uh, brings the colors in and raises the colors for us, I'm going to ask Ms. Nancy Hollingson, who's the chairman of the Republican Party of Pauline County, to bring us our prayer. Sorry, Greg, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being here. Um, I just thought, I usually start my prayer out with a, a bit of scripture, so I think this is pretty fitting. Commit your work to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Proverbs 16:3. Father, we just come before your throne and asking you for guidance and leadership with these gentlemen. We ask for clear thinking. And Miss Sandy, please forgive me, Miss Sandy. Uh, we ask that's for your guidance and clear thinking of the, and take the blinders off their eyes, Father, that they can hear your Holy Spirit as you talk to them as they go forth to do the business of this county. We all love this county. We all want to see this county prosper. And so I ask you, Father, to bless them and to let these young, these men go forth and move our county forward. So it is in your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Harry Pollard, Ford, Arch, Left Hard, Parch, Color Guard, Bolt, Present Pollard. The East Pauling High School Junior RTC requests permission to post the colors. Sir. Post the colors, please. You look very sharp. Thank you. Sir. Order colors. Post. Post. Present arms. Please join me in reciting our nation's pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Post. Horn. March. Horn. March. adopt the December 18th, 2018 work session minutes and the December 18th, 2018 board meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Davis. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Davis, you want to second by Commissioner Hart and all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There is five votes. Under announcements, there are none. Under invited guests, there are none. Under bid awards, none. Reports from committees and departments, none. Uh, consent agenda items, uh, let me back up. Under public participation in agenda items, we'll start with Ms. Nancy Hollingshead to speak on uh, a new attorney. back. 
Um, I just first want to say uh, I want to thank you guys. I'm so proud of you guys and being up here. And I'll support you 100%. Uh, uh, I'm real proud of uh, Commissioner Hart and Commissioner Collette for working very strongly together to build fences, which is what we need in this county to unify it again. So I'm very proud of that. And one thing that I do know for sure this morning uh, that Commissioner, uh, Chairman Commissioner uh, Carmichael said that is so true is that Ron Stover does have the biggest heart around. So I, I do know those things. So I'm saying that uh, I just want to come up here and talk about uh, the replacement of uh, Lonnie uh, as the uh, interim. I guess that she was the interim, but the attorney and going back to Tally Richardson Cable. Uh, first of all, as far as replacing Lonnie, Lonnie knows uh, this was not the first time Lonnie was chair, uh, was the attorney for the county uh, during Commissioner uh, Sharon's term. Uh, she replaced Glenn Richardson at that time when he became Speaker of the House. And she was replaced at that point in time also for political reasons, and I understand that. I'm, I've been in politics forever, so I understand all that. And, I, and, and, and that's, that's okay. That's, y that's what y'all need to do. But my problem is, let's go back to Tally Richardson Cable. They are the attorneys for the school board. They'll be the attorneys for you guys. The city of Hiram, the IBA, and the airport authority. There is such a big conflict of interest there. If the school board, say the school board wants to sue you, who are they going to be loyal to? You guys or the school board? Uh, I know outside this county people look at that and they say, well, who's the most important people? Who do I need to go talk to? If I need to go to Baldwin County, they're not going to say, well, go talk to the commissioners. They're going to say, go talk to Tally Richardson Cable. They are the most powerful people in this county. So we can't allow that. I, I urge you guys to, if you don't want Bonnie, please spit it out. I know right now you're saying, well, we have to have an attorney. And here's my suggestion. Uh, the, the former Lieutenant Governor of the state of Georgia said, nobody in this state understands county and state government better than Glenn Richardson. Glenn Richardson is not a part of Cable, Cable Richardson, well, Tally Cable Richardson, or whatever. Uh, so, but he is what they call uh, on council. I mean, he's he, there, but he's not part of the team. So my, my here's my suggestion, uh, is that you appoint Glenn Richardson as your interim while well, you guys shop it out. Because I personally believe we need to shop this out, get the best people. We do not need to continue. You guys have told me you want to move our county forward. But putting Tally, Richardson, Caitlin, you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Uh, we don't want to go backwards, we want to go forward. We want to unify and uh, we just don't need all this conflict. And we don't need people outside who wants to come to our, our county, to the move to our county, to look at this and think that only a few people in this county run the whole county. Uh, that that almost puts back a boss hog kind of mentality, and we don't want that. We want to be known as an ethical government out here that moves forward. So I just all I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also we have uh, Miss Kathy Helms on the business number one. She's also the Good afternoon. And happy New Year. And Frank, you did an awesome job this morning introducing, but I don't think we made a big enough deal about the first female that has ever been elected to this county board is sitting up there. All right. Um, I'm hand backing up. I'm going to disagree with something that the NC said. Um, I've been involved in politics a long time. I moved here from Chicago, which was very political. I am asking you, as a board, to not base decisions in votes on politics, but what's best for this county. It should never be about personal, or friends, or favors, or politics. It should be about what is best to move this county forward. And that's all I'm going to ask you. I have a lot of faith. I've known Brian since he was. 10 or 11 years old, I've gotten into Chuck, great guy. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in you. And just please remember to vote for your conscience based on what's best for our community. Thank you. 
Thank you both, both for your participation. Under the uh, consent agenda item, uh, action on two consent agenda items. I read them this morning, so I'll just entertain a motion. We have a motion from um, Commissioner Stover to approve these two consent agenda items. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Caker. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Here's five of them under old business. We have none. The new business is the number one is action to appoint Tally Richardson and Cable PA as the county attorney to and authorize the chairman of the data to a contract for such purposes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to deny. We have a motion to deny by Commissioner Davis. Is there a second? No second, so the uh, motion is canceled for lack of a second. So we entertain another motion. I'll make a motion. Okay, uh, <coughs> Commissioner Hart made a motion uh, to go along with the, uh, the wording in business, in business number one. Action to appoint Calvary and Cable PA as the county attorney and authorize the chairman to enter into a contract for such purposes. A motion from Commissioner Hart. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stover. Is there any discussion? say a couple of things. I start off um, the law firm of uh, Bentley and uh, the law firm that Joe Fowler's in and uh, also uh, attorney Glenn Richardson. Those parties have been spoken to uh, at length and <clears throat> those contacts were made and in fact that we anticipate the uh, possibility the probability of being able to reach out and contract uh, as we do right now with uh, Mr. Richardson uh, as the tax assessor uh, representative. But uh, we've got cases uh, in progress right now and coming up. And, uh, you know, if Calder Richardson Cable is affirmed, then <clears throat> I think they're amenable to reaching out to, to the law firms that they know over and above. But these are, these are ones that we have personally contacted. Me, so I guess it means it's my turn. I want to first talk about Lonnie Skipper uh, and what's happening here with her today. Um, it's unfortunate, uh, Dave, what happened this morning in the meeting where you, um, you're you going to refuse to come out here and terminate her. You know, I, the three of you need to know that when I've been talking to Dave about the county attorney position, he has told me over and over that the three incoming commissioners weren't gone. Three incoming commissioners weren't gone. And that's how he said it. And, I was in a meeting in uh, December with uh, Dave and Lonnie and Frank, and, uh, and he kept saying that. And um, and then, I think it was last week, last Friday, I was in a meeting with Dave, and he kept saying three commissioners weren't three three incoming commissioners weren't gone. Uh, and I said, and I said, so when they vote to fire her, are you going to vote against them? And he said, no. And I said, so you weren't gone too. And it wasn't until I pressed you to the wall that you agreed that, that you were part of that as well. Um, you, you're, you're, I mean, we don't have an attorney here to tell us any different than what Jason told us today about um, interim and how that works. I, I, I still disagree, but I don't, I'm obviously outnumbered on that point. Um, but you guys are running out, um, not just a wonderful person, but a wonderful attorney. She's got sharp legal mind. She's got 20 plus years of, of institutional knowledge and experience with the county. I mean, her career has been around this county and the service to it. 
she does exactly what we ask her to do. She's she's good. And she's and, and, and she does it just like just like we asked. Now, with the new board, the new director on the board, she could potentially be asked to do something other than what she was asked to do when your predecessors were here. Um, but she does what she's asked to do. She works at a rate that's less than half of what it should be. And then um, when we go to court with her, she wins in court. I mean, it's literally every single thing you could ask for in an attorney. You can't ask for anything more than that. Um, she's in the middle of handling some cases now that we need consistency in our representation on. We don't need to change attorneys on these cases. And, and, um, and to do that, it's going to be time consuming and costly. And I'll get to the, the money piece of this in a minute. But um, to do that, it's going to be time consuming and costly. And it's, and it's going to not be about our benefit in court on those cases that she's handled. Um, this is, this is um, I hate seeing this happen because this is, this is nothing but a political move. Um, and, and it has nothing to do with the work she's done. Also, you're coming in here on first meeting with the new board, and you're you're sending someone out the door without cause. And don't think for a minute that our that our county employees aren't watching this. They, they understand what's happening. We we worked hard, and, and um, Dave Dave nominated Frank for the county administrator position, and I I, I think Frank's done a fabulous job and of, of working to help build morale around the county with our employees. Um, this doesn't help that. He, um, we, he and, and Brian and, and, um, and Scott, working with all of our department heads, it's, Hawaii County is a better place to work than it used to be. Um, and we worked hard to achieve that. You're taking a hit to morale here uh, that we don't need to take, we shouldn't take. And so, Sending, sending money packing like you're doing is, 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 is wrong. You, you've got no experience with her. I mean, Chuck, and, Chuck, you and Brian were in executive session in December. You were in the executive session. And that, to my knowledge, that's the only experience you have with Lonnie. Sandy was unfortunately able to be there. We understand that. But, you know, I would think give, give her some time if she doesn't do the job as she should. Because regardless of who she supported, and regardless of what her personal views on an issue might be, she's an attorney who's gonna do what she's told to by her client. Because that's her job, is to do, is to do what the three or more of the people on this board tell her to do. So, um, you know, you can give her time. You don't have to vote on this today. You don't have to accept this nomination. We can reject this nomination and, and give her a chance to prove herself to you. I mean, as far as I know, you guys barely know her. Now, I'll admit I'm partial because in the two years, two and a half years plus that I've been here, um, Lonnie has proven herself to me to be loyal and dependable um, and an amazing attorney. I can't speak highly enough of, of her. She's she's. Everything, literally everything you can ask for in an attorney. So we don't have to we don't have to approve this nomination today. We don't have to vote on a new attorney today. We can turn this down. The other thing I want to talk about is is bidding this out. Dave had an idea, at least I think it was your idea, Dave. It was a good one, so I'll give you credit for it. It was in September, I believe it was, maybe late August. So he sent an email um, that said uh, well, it came from Angel, but it was from Dave. It said, we're going to be sending out for a request for qualifications, and we want to get input from attorneys in the area on, on the best way to go with the, with the legal services for the county. And, um, and I don't remember everybody that was on the board, but I know, I know Brennan and I supported you with that. Because county's growing. Sandy said today, I don't remember the year, it was 2040. 2049, 74%. That's a lot of people, y'all. That's a lot of people. And so it's going to make sense at some point for the county to have an in house legal team and not contract this out to a firm. It's, it, it may be that in, in the interim between now and then, it makes sense to have a different approach altogether. And so Dave's suggestion, what he was going to do in September, was to 
send out a letter and ask for proposals and ask people how to do this. We can get from other counties and find out at what point, as far as caseload or, or um, population, did you um, did you go to an in-house attorney or how is this working for you? You know, we've we've taken a step back on a couple of departments that we had that were that were already departments, and we've reworked those departments. And Frank has been a big part of that. Um, and it's, we have better departments because we took the time to go through it that way. And so I think that when you when you say we're going to bid it out, it says let's let's do that. It was only more recently that I've been told that we're not going to bid it out. We're just going to we're going to pitch that idea and we're going to toss it, and we're just going to go with go back to Calgary and Cable. We should we should at the very you know if you if you don't want to keep wanting I obviously don't have the votes to to um to 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 force that but if you if you want to change legal counsel we owe it to we owe it to ourselves as a board and to the citizens of the county to bid it out we can get proposals there's no harm in doing it. The only objection to that I've heard is is Dave saying that it was going to take 80 hours of work to do, and, and it wasn't he didn't feel that that was something that he should do. I disagree on that. It's worth it's worth bidding it out. Now it may come through that the bid process, the Tally Richardson Cable puts forth a package, makes an offer, goes through it, and um, and it looks like it's the best decision to make. If that's the case, the board can make that decision then. But there are other attorneys in the county, there are other attorneys nearby that may have an interest in representing the county. We, um, one of the citizens mentioned, I think it was Ms. Hollingshed, but it might be Kathy, I don't, I don't remember, but one of them mentioned um, the number of entities inside the county that this firm already represents. It, it can cause an issue, as you guys know, we've had, we've had to do um, conflict counsel on at least one occasion um, because, of, because of the firm representing two parties that were involved in lawsuits. And so it can be an issue. It's worth bidding out. Um, is there? I'll just ask you guys: Is there any? Is there any willingness to to finding a way here that we can bid this up, start a bid process, and open it up for bids, and get some proposals, and have a committee look at it, like we like we talked about doing in the fall? Is there any willingness from anyone here to do that? sure that everybody understands. There's an intergovernmental agreement regarding operation of the airport between the airport authority and the board of commissioners. That intergovernmental agreement requires the transfer of 163 acres at the airport from the county to the airport authority. And we've heard a lot about the 163 acres. The FAA has to approve land transfers when airports are involved. And the, um, because of the dispute, and because the two co-sponsors, us and the airport authority, were not on the same page with what was going on for the effort to commercialize, the FAA instructed us not to transfer the 163 acres. Now the board at that time, and this was 2016, was following through after I was in office, so it would have been between March and December, was following direction of the FAA and was not supportive of transferring that land. The law firm, the Tyler Richardson Cable, was then, as we just talked about, the attorney for both the county and the airport authority. And because of that, as I mentioned, we both had to get conflict counsel. Now, David Austin, who was the chairman of the, of the Board of Commissioners, 
in his last days of office, went to the TRC offices, and he signed over that 163 acres to the airport for me. Now, here's where I know that I know that the folks at the TRC have a different view of this, but I'm going to share with you how it was seen by the board at the time. Um, there's a rule in the Georgia State Bar Handbook, um, or Rule 4.2, and it, it talks about um, communication in, in a case with persons known to have representation. Um, so what happened was, at the office representing the airport authority, TRC gave <coughs> documents to an, uh, someone in a, involved in a case that was not represented by them, that they knew was represented by someone else. That's a very basic, one of the first rules with the state board, with the state bar. Uh, it's it's known by known well by all attorneys. Um, it's it's so serious that a maximum penalty for the violation of that rule is disbarment. Now that's not necessarily where the state bar goes first. It's not a it would be an immediate thing, but that's what it can lead to. It's a serious thing, and neither the board of commissioners nor Smith Connerly, who was our conflict counsel, gave permission for, or consent for that communication to take place. It happened behind our backs. In fact, we didn't learn about it until David Austin was deposed, I believe it was in February the following year. So that had been signed over. We had been betrayed as a board, as a client. And, 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 and we didn't even know it. And because of that action, County incurred further legal fees because we had to go. Um, you guys were following it, I'm sure. FAA got involved in, and had us work to try to work out a joint corrective action plan, and that's where that joint corrective action plan came from. So we've got all of these things that that happen, and it's I mean, betrayal is the word that comes to my mind. And, and if you've got a firm, our budget for general fund legal fees about four hundred thousand dollars a year. If you've got a firm that will betray a client that gives them that much business, if they did it once, I believe they'll do it again. We can't afford that. We can't afford to give this responsibility to some to a firm that that has behaved. Like that. So I have to stand very strongly opposed to to the, to to the nomination here. Um, I, I, you know, this is, this is the wrong thing to do. You guys need to not let your first action as commissioners be an act of, of, of political right um, you, you need just this retaliation. And, <coughs> some comments about the contract. I guess I can move to it doesn't feel like there's a lot of desire for conversation on this decision you guys are about to make. So I do want to get into the contract. The letter from Mr. Cable um, to Chairman Carmichael with this contract for proposed legal services is dated January 2nd, which would have been a week ago tomorrow. I was handed this on my way out the door after the work session today. So I've had a little time to read it, but I did have a couple of comments. Uh, that if you guys are going to insist on moving forward with, with all of this, that you need to give consideration to. The first one is, um, do you guys have a copy of the contract with you? All right. Yeah. So this would be section B, labeled term, paragraph two. It gives us the right to terminate the contract uh, upon not less than six months written notice. Also gives the attorney the permission to con terminate the contract upon not less than six months written notice. We need to get that reduced, uh, eliminated preferably. Um, my concern here is uh, when, when we were betrayed the first time, we were able to terminate the relationship immediately. This contract will um, require us to keep them uh, 
six months from when we're ready to not have them anymore. Even if it's not the same type of an issue that happened the first time, uh, if there is a change in political will on the board, six months notice is well, well in advance of any election that would happen, and, um, and, and this is binding a uh, potential future board in a way that should be bound. So I'd like to see if we can discuss uh, removing the, um, the six months notice uh, clause in the paragraph. Additionally, uh, during the six month, the second thing I have here, during the six month period, once they've been given notice, says that we will pay them no less than $25,000 per month. So we could have the option to give them notice and start doing legal, legal work with a different firm, but we would then have to pay, so we would, it would total $150,000 to have them do nothing for six months. If that's the, that would be, our, I guess, essentially a buyout. So um, that we need to discuss um, in terms of how that would work. And then the other, the other issue I have is under Section C, Paragraph 1, um, hourly rates of 175 for attorney time and 85 dollars for legal paralegal excuse me paralegal or um, paralegal or administrative time the um, current rates for our legal fees is 130 for attorney and 55 for paralegal and um, this is a 35 percent and a 55 percent increase services. Um, Dave told me on, what did you tell me Dave? I think it was Friday that this is considered the school board rate, which is, I under, I'm not saying that this isn't a reduced rate. I know that $175 for uh, Jason's time is, is certainly a reduced rate. Um, Dave told me this was the school board rate and that's great, but we give, we will bill a whole lot more hours than the school board and so I think that there should be some, um, maybe some further consideration given there. Those are the issues that I have with the contract. The, uh, the final thing that is my concern as you guys are looking at enforcing this issue is uh, money. The $175, as I said, is a 35% increase over the 130. The uh, Current fiscal year has just under, I checked these numbers as of, I think they were as of yesterday. Current fiscal year has 232,935 remaining in general fund legal expense as far as budgeted, unspent budgeted for the fiscal year. So if we spent, if we budgeted what we expected to be 100%, which is how we do it, 35% increase requires an extra $81,527. So if you're going to hire a new attorney, and you're going to pay an attorney, a new attorney $175 an hour, a 35% increase, you have to come up with $81,527 somewhere in the current budget for the rest of this fiscal year to offset the additional charges, the additional funds that are going to be spent on an attorney. And I don't know if we have a, we have a proposal for that or not, but I would, I would suggest that we need to have that um, budget amendment uh, ready to be voted upon before we make this decision. You have anything else? You can go ahead. I mean, but that's that's it for now. I may I may have a comment if you have some discussion you might. Just open it up for discussion with the uh, post commissioners. Defer to you if you have any comments. <coughs> Nothing at all. Yeah. And we're running out of 20 year. Yeah. You got something? Well, uh, <coughs> first of all, I'm not real crazy about the speculation of, of how you think we present to the department heads. You know, with all due respect, you know, we did come in here and, you know, there were people that believed in, in something that we believed in. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and that's what we're going to try to implement. Part of the implementation of this is to take care of some legal problems that we have. You and I discussed it briefly, and I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get this drunk out in front of this whole board. 
But there are things we need to clean up. And there, if we're not doing something one way and it's not working, we have to do it a different way. You know, and that's just what may have to happen here. You know, with all due respect, I love Nancy and I love Kathy and I appreciate your input and I'll always reach out for your input. Um, but with that being said, you know, there's just some things that I would much, I'd much rather see a 30 year standard, you know, proven person. I would trust that over what we've had in the past that we've had, you know, created some more legal issues. I mean, can you understand that? Robert? Okay, um, well first I think maybe I didn't come across right when I was talking about perception by the employees. Um, I wasn't saying that, that I, I think maybe I didn't say it, say it right. When you have a new, you have new management at the executive level, and that's what we have here. And when the first act of business is to get rid of someone who's been with the county for 20 years for no reason other than we feel it's time for change, that's perceived as you coming in and, and, and pushing people out without reason. And that's what I was trying to say. I know that you're here because people believe in you to get you here, and I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to say that at all. My concern is that you have employees, whether they be department heads or people elsewhere in the organization, who see, oh, that board came in and they ran out line and she's been around forever. And they were, like, she, it's not that she was um, defiant or did a poor job or did something that cost us or committed some act like had happened with TRC when they were terminated the first time. It was, um, it's just to be done by a new board. That's what I was saying doesn't work. The other part of it is that you say you need change so that we can get things done. The change to get things done happened when you guys got elected. That's, that's the change you guys needed. Now we can disagree on some of the issues, and we will, I'm sure. But if, if three of you want to make a change, Three of you can make a change. You don't need a new attorney to do that. You, if the majority of this board directs an attorney to do something, they'll do it. Lonnie's an amazing professional attorney, and if she was directed by the board to do something, she may advise against it. Legal counsel needs to do that, because we, we don't always think like a lawyer and, and think of every scenario like a good attorney will. She may advise against something, but if at the end of the day the board says no, this is how we want to move forward, that's what will happen. You don't need a new attorney to, to make things change. The change happened at the ballot box when you guys got elected. Please. Um, well, it's, it's like you said, they, you know, it serves at our pleasure. You had a situation back when you said that uh, the 163-acre thing went in. And like I said, I don't, we don't need to feel that. I don't know what that is. But, but what you're saying is that she did what she was told, and that was that's the results You know, were, were not what we needed. But they did what they were told back then also. Uh, TRC, you know, back in, back in the day. TRC night. was, we did not tell TRC to do that. That's the problem. And that's the whole issue. The board was not willing to sign over that 163 acres because we some of the stars not be were opinionated though. No, you know, there's a letter from the FAA that says don't do it. Don't transfer this over. You, the FAA said we and the airport authority had to be in agreement and that they had to approve the transfer of the land. You said the first part of that, not the second. So, have to be in agreement, right? So, so the board was unwilling to transfer that land. Also, there was the issue with the Atlanta suit, and I won't get into the, the possibility possibilities of the Atlanta suit. But we're really not here to argue and dig up, no. dig up old. Okay, I, I get that, Dave, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to be argumentative. It's important we understand what happened when this firm was terminated the first time. And that, that isn't, that can be talked about in private conversations, no, 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 but, it's, no, but it's, no, being, no. it's being voted on here. We can talk about it in the back room, and we have, and we've done that. But the, the thing is, I can't agree to go talk about this in the back room, because this is where it's going to happen, and that firm's going to get put back in place. Whether they were fired for cause, and, they, and now they're being handed the job back without any bid process, without any effort to find any better way of doing it without taking any thought into consideration for the growth of the county, for any of that, what might be the best way to handle our legal legal situation going forward, and now they're, they're being handed the job back. 
They help flip the board and they're being handed the job back. That's what's happening here. So we can talk about it in the back room, but the truth is that right here is where it happens. And I have an obligation to the people of this county to make it known that that's what's happening here. We were straight by our fund. They flipped the board and helped flip the board. And, th and now they're being given their job back. At the very least, you guys ought to put this out for bids. Ron, uh, you know, I'm going to step in. But, no, please do. You know, we're grown men and women here, and we have a great discussion. Many more, I'm sure. Um, me and you had a discussion the other day, and you, you know why I voted, why I feel the way I do. I do. And I'd rather not say that. But I, I feel that. I have a great relationship personally with them. They do a great job. You're speaking of TRC? Yes. Okay. You know, uh, that, there's nothing against them in my book. Uh, like I said, man, you had that discussion. What happened a few years ago that made me turn my head against? I understand. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate the candidates you know, of that discussion and, we had. And that was good. And, and, and I don't mind having a discussion. But you can ask my wife and kids about that. I don't fuss at them when we talk. And I don't like to be fussed at either. When I talk to my employees, <coughs> I treat them with respect. Even when I may, I have to fire people, and I understand. And talking about morality, <clears throat> morale and stuff like that around the county, I understand. I hate to, to, to hurt morale. But sometimes you gotta make tough decisions. And when you're in business, and when you're in a position that we're in, we have to make tough decisions. We're gonna, this is not the first one we're gonna make. So please, out of respect for the board, have a conversation all day long, but I feel like you know, raising your voice and, and, and doing what you're doing is not the way I'm sorry, I feel very passionate. I feel very passionate about this, and I wasn't intended to talk talk at you, uh, and I apologize if that's the way that it came across. I do feel very strongly about this, as you can, as I'm sure you can tell, and I do appreciate the the. Uh, we had a couple of good conversations about this over the weekend, and I do appreciate you taking taking the time for that. Well, I got nothing against you. I really Ditto. Yeah, so I just, I guess I should have told you before you come in here, so. Well, I believe that's the way to handle things. I think everybody in this room wants to get over this kind of stuff, wants to heal. Um, you know, the reason we need to talk about it in the next room over is because there are too many inaccurate things that are stated. There's, there's too many things that are being stated as correct that are just not correct. Um, and I've asked you, and we'll do this. Ron, myself, and Tom Cable need to sit and, you know, this is the way I think you resolve issues, is you look people in the eye, talk with them. If you want to bring up all those things, I think you'll find that about half of them they said are incorrect. <laughs> I think that's all. That's, that, that's all. I mean, I know that's you were on the board at that time, Dave, but this is, I mean, that's what happened. So I, 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 have a, I do, I do in, uh, uh, in fairness, I do know that the firm has a different opinion of, of, the, of those events. I, I do understand that. And, What's your point? and that, that can be, uh, apparently it's going to be, need to be a, a, an issue of disagreement. Well, let's let's go have that conversation, the fairway conversation. I think it needs to be needs to be had. I've got a lot of other notes that I took down from what you said, but I just don't think it's the way to start out the first day of Poly County Board Commission's meeting. Certainly, they're not the way to start out the first year, the first meeting. I'll agree with you on that. You said you said you had some other notes with other comments that you had. Yeah, I've got a lot of other notes. I have them. Um, I've been on the phone with President Dave Wills, the ACCG, Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, with a conference call with two attorneys in his office down in Atlanta uh, to talk about pluses and minuses and, and how you can set up legal departments. Um, I have asked uh, I and the county administrator have around to many constitutional officers and department heads um, to assess 
their thoughts and the value that they placed on kind of Richard Cable and on Jason Phillips. So spent a lot of time and, and done some homework, maybe maybe not put out advertisements. Uh, in the county, there are really no municipal governmental qualified attorneys that particularly come as a firm and you save a lot of time by using a firm in many cases because you don't have to pick up the phone or you don't have to drive across town to establish contact with somebody. You can walk down the hall and that educational piece or attorney talk with the county attorney and you can resolve a lot of things rapidly in that manner. So as I've already mentioned, the experience and the expertise, just like Ms. Skipper had, and uh, I'm grateful for her contribution to legal services, and, and this needs to be heard. I have asked her, with Baker Street as my witness, to continue to help us as we transition, and as she does have the continuity and institutional knowledge of two or three specific cases, and actually, she and uh, we were going to have a meeting tomorrow morning, but she got the flu. So I don't think it'll happen tomorrow morning, but in, in this handoff, in this professional pass down um, to Jason Phillips and that firm, um, we're going to take care of all those things. So I'm going to ask you why the change is hard and not in suddenly an unwillingness to let this be bid out. I know you said that you didn't think there were any attorneys that would in the county to do it, but well, I actually, what's the real reason? I actually got a text from Commissioner Collette that said, don't take it to Cobb County because that would be hypocritical. I think I still have the text, but <laughs> then you look inside the county, as I just mentioned, um, their attorneys have their, their legal specialties, and uh, you know, it's very, very specialized. Is, uh, you're, you're you're not not we might be able to solicit ideas, right? As we, it's not. It can't be that far down the road that we're going to need to be looking at a potential in-house legal legal team. Um, you know, it, it could be a, just a few years before that's something that, that could be justified. Um, we could be soliciting ideas. Um, it's you know, I mean, I respect Brian Collette as much as. Anybody else I can think of right now, but I, you know, maybe there's a lawyer over there that would make more sense. But we don't know because you've decided not to ask. You've decided to just say, well, that was a good idea. This eight page document that came from Frank's office, I think it came from Frank's office, this is eight page document. We're just going to toss it aside because we have a letter ready to send out, but we're not going to do it. Um, it feels to me that you should, that it's worth getting at it before you make a change on the legal team. You you need to do that. You, changing legal teams, if, if we were to change now and then reevaluate this and change again, we're going to incur a lot more expense because we're already going to be in a position where we're going to have to pay Lonnie to hand off caseload to the TRC. Maybe she's willing to help with the transition. And goodness, if after, after the way that she's been treated the last several months, if she's willing to do that, she's even more amazing than I thought she was. Um, but if she's w willing to do, she, if she's willing to continue some of those, that it might help. It would help. But there's caseload that she's going to have to offload, and we're going to be paying two attorneys that time. So if we change now and then end up looking at and changing it later, there's going to be paying for that transition again. So it, it makes sense to me if you want to change something out. Well, Lonnie's done nothing that warrants termination, that, that as far as the execution of her job, and and she is. Um, and she's fully capable to continue as in, in the interim role while we go through a bid, bid process and put together a, I think you had, I don't remember the details of the, but you had, you had thought through the, the information about who should be in the room and who should be, who should be part of the committee to do interviews and, and things like that. I think it's worth doing uh, versus just handing the, handing the business back to TRC. Any other comments? Do have some things on the reduced costs, but uh, well, you did you did mention about lawyers going down the hallway to other lawyers. There will be costs there. I think you know, cost savings there. I don't know that you're going to get forty dollars an hour, forty five dollars an hour out of that. Um, there'll be reduced phone conversations. 
know, there'll be a better vetting of when a paralegal uh, may be substituted for a, a full pass the bar attorney. Um, there'll be times when legal action may not even be required um, by better vetting. Um, There'll be less or, or maybe zero, hopefully, conflict counsel, which has been extremely expensive. So so we, we can both agree, though we don't know for sure what they would be, that there could be some cost savings. And um, I, I can, can see that point. I don't think you're going to get $45 an hour. But that aside, what budget amendment do you have to prepare to spend the additional funds on legal counsel? Hello. I'm suggesting that there would be enough reduced cost where it would it would be. You're going to offset in eighty thousand dollars, maybe more. <laughs> okay. Well, we are um, halfway through our budget year, um, and we need to watch that closely. Kevin is not here, but when we get those reports, we need to be watching that closely, or we're going to run into a budget problem towards the end of our fiscal. Most definitely. Any other comments? Good. Okay, we've got a motion uh, to appoint Tyler Richardson Cable PA as the county attorney and authorize the chairman to enter into a contract for such purposes. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we've had discussion. Uh, we'll take a vote at this time. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. uh, motion carries 4 1. Business item number three is to approve Harold Lennon Cole to the Paulding County uh, Airport Authority with a three year term ending December 31st, 2022. Anybody hear a motion? Dave, I'll make the motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve by Commissioner Davis. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Caker. Is there any discussion? Now, again, just to clarify my change on this, my change on this nomination from previous was about a 
conflict of interest that existed because of his work with the Michael Baker Group, and that is no longer a conflict. So that's the reason that I've changed some of this. Thank you for looking into it and giving him a call. I did give him a call. He's a seems to be a nice guy. Yeah, a wonderful asset to have for authority. All right, let's vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries five zero. That's the conclusion of our regular business. We do have executive session for real estate and pending potential litigation. Uh, let's see, uh, we had just looking ahead here, no public participation on non-agenda items. And uh, we will, I will entertain a motion to go into your executive session. I'll make the motion to go to the executive session for personnel, real estate, pending, and potential litigation. It's my understanding it's just real estate and pending and potential litigation. Mr. Chairman, I think you're the for personnel. Okay, I see. I make the motion for all of the above. Okay, uh, we have a motion for joining the executive session. Is there a second? I'll second. A second. Commissioner right. Stover and all those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourn the executive session. This time I call the regular session back to order and report that no action was taken in executive session. Anybody has a comment, I'll uh, open, open up for that. If not, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Because uh, I can go ahead and make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, a motion to adjourn by uh, Mr. Davis. And we're going to second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Stover. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0 and we're adjourned. <laughs>